Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Adam Cellini. Topping our news tonight, lawmakers are getting into crunch time for the Florida legislative session. The Florida Senate feeling the strain holding a rare Saturday session today. That session was aimed at making schools safer following that mass school shooting down in Parkland, Florida that left 17 people dead. The current sweeping proposal would raise the age to 21 for the purchase of rifles and other long guns, create a three day waiting period on purchasing of rifles and address school hardening and mental health issues. It would also create what is being called a school marshal program that would allow specially trained teachers and other school workers who are deputized by local law enforcement to carry guns to school. The legislation is drawing criticism from both sides of the political spectrum with gun control advocates saying the bill does not do enough and gun rights supporters saying the measure would penalize uh, law abiding gun owners. There's a lack of support by some for many different reasons. Um, some because they don't want to buck the NRA and, and some of us who are all about true safety um, and not arming teachers or any other personnel that would be inside of a classroom. We have to start somewhere and we have to uh, take seriously, more seriously than ever before, the issue of security in our schools and safety in our schools. And this bill really is unprecedented. To the, date they apply for state the final version of the Senate bill is expected to be debated and voted on Monday. If passed by the Senate, the House would discuss it during the final week of the 2018 legislative session. Any bill that comes from the legislature would ultimately have to be approved by Governor Rick Scott, who has said that he opposes that school marshal portion of the bill. The Senate also voting today to pass a proposal that would give firefighters, police officers and other first responders workers compensation benefits for post traumatic stress disorder. Right now, workers compensation benefits only cover physical injuries. A similar House bill is set for a vote next week. In a show of solidarity, dozens of motorcyclists lined the street along 14th Street West in Bradenton earlier today. The group paying their respects to a friend who was killed, struck on his motorcycle while passing, uh, excuse me, while raising community awareness over the dangers motorcyclists face on our roadways every day. The group 941 Riders have uh, done awareness rides in the past, reminding people to look twice for those cyclists, respect riders, and don't drink text and drive. But today, organizers of that protest, uh, Matthew Morrison says they are trying something different and hoping to make a lasting impression. They're seeing us today. I want to be I want them to be able to see us tomorrow. You know, you hear all these horns honking as, as they drive by and they see us today. Um, but I, I want this to continue tomorrow and each and every day. Morrison says today's rally will be the first of many. The group plans to be doing this the first Saturday of every month. And I bet their fingers are crossed for weather like they had today. Clear skies. Wendy Ross joins us for our first alert weather forecast. And Wendy, will it continue? Oh my goodness. Let's hope so. It is so beautiful out there. Take a look at these temperatures. 71 degrees right now. We have clear skies out there. And take a look at what's going on. Our dew point at 47 degrees. Our humidity is low. The winds are coming in out of the northwest. 13 miles per hour, so it's kind of breezy out there. But as you head outside, everywhere you go is going to be seeing temperatures right around that 70 degree mark. 71 in Sarasota, Bradenton and Venice, 69 degrees. Everyone reporting clear skies. It doesn't matter if you're in Tallahassee or Key West, if you're along the East Coast in Pompano Beach or right here along the Sun Coast. We are looking at clear skies for everyone. And for tonight, it's going to be cool once again. We've got those temperatures dropping down. Tonight, we'll see the overnight time period with readings in the 50s. But for now, we're just going to be mild, 68, 64 degrees, at least until 9 o'clock tonight. Night, and it is going to be gorgeous. We'll let you know what we can expect for tomorrow. That's coming up in just a few minutes, Adam. All right, thank you very much, Wendy. Well, some snowbirds may be getting ready to travel back up north, but they won't be alone. A few species of sharks are also heading that direction up Florida's coast as the water temperatures get warmer. ABC 7's Erica Jackson uh, is here with more uh, to tell us if there's any reason to be concerned as people head for, to our area for spring break. 
It's just some beautiful weather out here, so uh, we're trying to take advantage of it before it gets too hot. Don't mistake Collins Snowball and its friends for tourists. Saturday marks the start of spring break for colleges like University of Florida, and some locals like Snowball can spot visitors from a mile away. We always joke when uh, us locals see the people in the water right now when it's so cold that they've got to be from up north. So uh, definitely it's a little chillier than we're used to here. Well, the weather's changing, uh, people are migrating, sharks are migrating. Moat Marine scientist Bob Huter knows Sarasota beaches will be filled with spring breakers in the coming days, and the chilly water filled with black tip sharks. Now, this is a time for some of these warmer water sharks, such as the black tip shark, to come in uh, from where they've been offshore and, and in places farther to the south and start moving north. Dr. Huter jokes the sharks are scratching their heads after cold water temperatures in January and an extremely warm February. Now they're making their way north, some swimming past North Carolina. Huter says it's unlikely beachgoers will see the sharks in the Gulf because the water isn't deep until 100 miles offshore. Well, there's lots of room for the sharks to do their thing and, and feed on, on our side so they're not quite so concentrated close to the, the beach here. The sharks will stay in the Gulf throughout the summer, swimming away from the shore to colder waters as the temperatures grow hotter. Huter says the species' massive migration is a success story of conservation. These sharks were depleted at one time, and this is a species that's very healthy. These thousands of sharks in aggregations is a very good sign that we've rebuilt the population. And Mo Marine Laboratory uh, warns beachgoers to now wear shiny jewelry or bright clothing in the water because a shark may mistake it for a fish. And these black tip sharks won't be going anywhere anytime soon. Moat scientists say the pregnant females will move into small areas of water like Sarasota Bay to give birth in late spring. Well, phase two of an affordable housing project in Venice is gaining momentum this week after being okayed for funding from the state. The money will go towards phase two of Venetian Walk, which is expected to be the family component of the city's affordable housing community on Grove Street. The Florida Housing Finance Corporation preliminarily, uh, preliminarily approved an award in December for the project, but the decision was open to challenge by applicants who were denied uh, then this week. The project developer gave uh, Venice the go-ahead for funding. The project cost is $11.6 million. A group of Suncoast residents will be watching the Academy Awards extra close this year. Students and alumni from Ringling College's computer animation department have worked on every Oscar-winning best animated feature since 2005. Uh, let me see, make sure I got that right. Hold on. 2003, pardon me. And this year, that streak just may continue. ABC 7's Stephanie Webb has more on that story. ZPD's first rabbit officer, Judy Hopps. You ready to make the world a better place? <sighs> Zootopia, Big Hero 6, Frozen, Toy Story 3. What do all these movies have in common? Well, they're all Oscar winners for Best Animated Feature, and they all feature work from students and alumni of Ringling College. Now, these aren't just movie posters that are on a wall. These are actually pieces of history because Ringling College students and alumni have worked on almost every single Oscar-nominated Best Animated Film. Paul Downs is a 2001 Ringling College alum and knew from an early age that animation was what he wanted to do. From the very beginning, I would watch a game show called Pressure Luck and I'd make flipbooks of that. I love Disney films. He's now worked on animated features like Ice Age and Rio, and recently on Ferdinand, one of this year's Best Animated Feature Oscar nominees. It was huge. And after all the films that I worked on, it was, it was the first one that I worked on that was actually nominated. Downs has returned to Ringling to teach what he's learned. Students Aviv Mano from Israel and Victoria Lopez from Argentina have both worked on another nominated film, the favorite to win this year, Disney's Coco. And they both realize the toughest thing to learn as an animator, giving their characters heart. You can make things or learn to make things move in a convincing way and like an entertaining way, but if there's no heart behind it, no idea that someone can see and, and see something of themselves in it, then it doesn't, there's no hook, so it's, it doesn't really compel. Making people feel something, it's all based on their story. What do they, where do they come from? What do they want? Why do they want it? You know where to find this cowboy. 
Stephanie Webb, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you very much, Stephanie. Very cool. We all have our fingers crossed. Well, still to come here on ABC 7, a deadly shooting outside the White House. What the Secret Service is saying about that incident. Plus, millions of Americans on the Northeast are recovering after a powerful storm brought power outages, flooding, and snow. What if you had a medical emergency away from home? My chest hurts. I can't breathe. What you need is Mobile Help, America's premier mobile medical alert system. Most systems only work at home, but with Mobile Help, you get help outside the home with coverage nationwide on one of the largest cellular networks at the press of a button. Call the number on your screen for a free full color brochure. We'll send you everything you need, including this base station, the patented mobile device, and the waterproof pendant and wrist button. You can also add the fall button that automatically detects falls and signals help. Call today and receive a risk-free 30-day trial. There is no equipment to buy and no long-term contract. For a limited time, you will also receive a free emergency key box with your planned purchase. Remember, mobile help keeps you safe coast to coast. Call 1-800-916-8638. That's 1-800-916-8638. Florida Studio Theater presents Native Gardens. Stately gardens and cultures clash, turning friendly neighbors into feuding adversaries. When a disagreement over a long-standing fence spirals into an all-out comedic battle of taste, privilege, and entitlement, no one comes out smelling like a rose. Critics are calling Native Gardens timeless as well as timely, smart, and first-rate. Audience are calling it one of the best. Native Gardens is now playing. Tickets can be purchased by calling 941-366-9000 or by visiting floridastudiotheater.org. As it was when my husband passed away, I knew I had to keep doing what I love. Oops, coming! But I needed help, help with my insurance, and that's what the NAIC provides. They have resources to help you and your family make the best decision, and they'll help you to keep moving forward, just like me. To be able to just get my son here and not think about how we will pay for it, it just takes so much weight off of my family. St. Jude allowed me to focus on being a mom to Bryce. And sometimes I'm just in awe of the impact St. Jude has, not only on this community, but the world. A shooting investigation is underway in Washington, D.C. tonight after authorities say a man shot himself to death outside the White House. The District of Columbia Police Department saying in a tweet that, quote, an adult male has been declared deceased. We are working to notify next of kin. That tweet comes about two hours after the Secret Service first reported that they were responding or it was responding to reports of a self-inflicted shooting along the White House's north fence. The incident taking place before President Donald Trump's scheduled late afternoon return to the White House from Florida. The Secret Service says there were no other reported injuries. Here on the Sun Coast, it's a beautiful day, but farther up on the northeast coast of the country tonight, millions are recovering from a powerful storm. In the winter storm, uh, in the winter storm's wake, falling trees killing at least seven people. And as ABC's Mark Remillard reports, crews working feverishly to restore power to more than 1.4 million customers. On the second day of a powerful nor'easter, high tide surging several feet in situate Massachusetts, pushing waves into the seawall. At times, winds gusting up to 90 miles per hour, blasting the water into houses. In Salisbury, Massachusetts, tides and winds surging through the streets. The Massachusetts governor declaring a state of emergency. The state's National Guard busy all night, rescuing over 100 people in the town of Quincy, including these children. We do have the National Guard still with us that are helping us transport people back and forth. 
even transporting stranded residents in the buckets of tractors after water washed out roads. This couple and their dog brought to safety on a boat. The fire department in Duxbury saving Rocky, trapped under a collapsed structure. In Pennsylvania, many digging out from the wet snow mass. Last year you could plow that off. It wasn't wet, it wasn't mud, this is bad. The high winds toppling power lines, crews working overtime to get more than two million people back online. And out west, another storm dropping four feet of snow in the Sierra Nevada, causing avalanches, one crashing down on five people near Lake Tahoe. All of them survived, including one man who was uncovered after six minutes and then snowboarded down the mountain. Saw about an eight-foot wall of snow, and then a second later, uh, it had hit us. Luckily, the, the very tip of my snowboard was, was showing. Big props to the, the civilian skiers around us. Mark Remillard, ABC News, New York. Wendy Ross joins us once again with a weather update. Not dealing with anything no. quite like oh, that. No. But I, I did notice it was a little chillier this morning. Oh, yeah. Uh, going outside. Oh, yeah. We had temperatures in the 50s this morning. And so by comparison to what we've experienced over the past several weeks, it was cold. <laughs> it was cold. But I would have called this one of our 10 best days of the year, wouldn't it's, you? It's I mean, look at it right now. Right oh, there. my gosh. It is so gorgeous. We've got clear skies out there. And it is dry. And it's cool and it's just marvelous. So if you're going outside, you'll need a jacket, you'll need a sweater. If you're a Floridian, you'll definitely need that because it's going to be a chilly night tonight. Dew points are very low. Take a look at these dew point degrees. Look at 38 in Tampa, 36 in Fort Myers. We're even seeing some 20s down to the south in the 50s right now. And this is what is keeping us so dry. Are these dew point levels are 39 degrees in Lakewood Ranch. You move al along the waterway and it's a little bit higher, but still very, very dry out there. And that, of course, is a result of that cold front coming on through. And just look at this dry air in the upper levels of the atmosphere all the way down to the surface, and it is affecting the entire state. And, of course, when you have these kind of dry conditions, you don't have a cloud in the sky, and that's what we're, we're experiencing right now. So no matter where you are, Tallahassee all the way down to Key West, we are looking at clear conditions. And today, we actually got up to a high of 78, but it was a chilly start to the morning. Below average, 53 degrees was our overnight low. Normally, we're 55 and 75 for the daytime high. So this morning, we saw very cold temperatures over the northern part of the state, 50s across central Florida. And so these temperatures that you're seeing right here will actually be just a little bit cooler tonight. So we are expecting to see the possibility of temperatures in the 40s for the overnight lows. And because of that very, very dry weather that we've got on top of us, it will help to bring those temperatures down just a little bit more tonight with lows will be in the upper 40s for many locations, sunny and mild though, again on Sunday. So another beautiful day on Sunday right now. We've got temperatures in the low 70s, 60s on Longboat Key and Siesta Key. Venice reporting 70 degrees. Boca's at 74. You move away from the shoreline. Temperatures are just a smidge warmer. 72 in Mayaca City and Arcadia uh, right now at 73 degrees. Those winds will continue to come in out of the northwest and then they'll shift around out of the north and maybe even out of the northeast. But for the most part, the strongest winds are along the coastline right now and most down to the south, 16 mile per hour winds down in Boca Grande at this point. And as you can see, we don't have any clouds right now, and we're not going to see any tomorrow. It's going to be another beautiful day along the west coast, maybe a few high thin clouds along the east coast. On Monday, we may get a passing cloud, no rain all the way through Monday. And if you're heading to the beach tomorrow, it will be windy. Winds are going to be coming in out of the north at 15 to 20 knots, so small craft should exercise caution two to four foot feet cho uh, of seas and uh, choppy out on the bay and inland waters. The temperature out at the Gulf will be 73 for those of you going out to the water. Clear and cooler tonight, 49. Normally we're 57 degrees. And this is where we're going to see the misery is going to be over the central part of the week is when we're going to start to get the rain. 60% chance of showers during the overnight time period. 40% on Wednesday, 30% in the morning on Thursday. Temperatures get cold again with that next cold front, but we are going to finish out the weekend on a great high note, 73, and it's going to be gorgeous. Adam.
Now, sports. Well, for many baseball fans, the draw of spring training is a chance to get closer to your favorite players on the diamond. But today, Pirates fans were treated to an even closer experience at the annual Pirates Fest. For two hours before an afternoon home game against Philadelphia Phillies, Pirates players sat for autographs and pictures with many of their fans. And for those who didn't want to wait in the lines, there were plenty of chances to win prizes at some games you could participate in. But don't ask us. Here's a few testimonials from fans. My favorite parts are the mascots, so you need to come here and get a picture with the parrot. Uh, I like to be able to uh, go through the ticket line and, and get some uh, players' autographs there and get to talk to those guys. It was also ABC 7 day at Lecom Park. Evening anchor and fan favorite Scott Dennis had the honor of throwing out the game's first pitch. And we're just going to have to assume it's a strike here, unfortunately. Didn't get the shot of the glove, that's okay. He threw it out with U.S. Congressman Vernon Buchanan. And there's Suncoast View's Stephanie Roberts singing the Star Spangled Banner. The Pirates won 4-3. And the Rays took on the Tigers up in Lakeland. Tampa Bay starter Chris Archer gave up a first inning home run to Nick Castellanos. He goes less than two innings with two walks, two earned runs. But the Rays ace says don't read too much into it. He's still working on a few different pitches. But I was able to use my changeup. Uh, it wasn't quite as good as the first time, but... I feel honestly like I, I did make some growth, although uh, the bottom line wasn't great. Adam Moore would help answer in the second inning with a solo shot of his own. C.J. Crone stays hot with a third inning RBI double, and the Rays beat the Tigers 7-4. to four. And the Orioles also taken on the Phillies today, except they were up in Clearwater. Baltimore starter Kevin Gosman was electric, giving up no hits through three innings of work, including five strikeouts. He gets the win as the Orioles put up four runs against Philadelphia's split squad. Before. Lightning hosted a barn burner against the Flyers today. Ten goals through the third period. Victor Hedman makes it 11 right there with 10 minutes to go, but the Flyers would tie it. And overtime, not enough. We go to a shootout. Here's Braden Point getting the first goal for the Lightning. Steven Stamkos can put it on ice, and he does. Lightning wins 7-6 at home after a little bit of extra hockey. More to come here on ABC7. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. In life after the military, it's our duty as veterans to have each other's back. I'm retired Colonel Greg Gatson, and it's my mission to help you get the benefits and services you've earned. If you need to file a VA claim, remember these important steps. Submit an online claim through ebenefits.va.gov. Work with an accredited veteran service organization or VSO. And if you need to attend a VA claim exam, please go. Visit this website to learn what to expect. Zupan, part of the U.S. Paralympic rugby team. In my game, movement is everything. I get frustrated when my move is blocked, especially when that guy has no right to be there, even just for a minute. I love a challenge, but I don't like to play this game every day. A message from the United Spinal Association.
allow your weight to threaten your health or control your future. Excess weight or obesity can cause emotional and physical health risks, but you can take control. The Your Weight Matters campaign offers free resources and tips to help you measure and understand your weight. Take the Your Weight Matters Challenge. The free toolkit prepares you to speak with a healthcare provider about your weight. Your weight does matter. Take the challenge and take control today. Check out mysuncoast.com slash dining, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. If you're heading to St. Petersburg or Tampa this Sunday, you should avoid the Sunshine Skyway Bridge in the morning hours. Northbound lanes of the Skyway Bridge will be closed on Sunday from 4 a.m. until 10 a.m. for the inaugural Skyway 10K. The southbound portion of the bridge will remain open, but only for southbound drivers. Anyone needing to get across the bridge heading north will have to find a different route. The iconic bridge, which covers three counties, will serve as the setting for 7,000 people racing that 6.2 mile course. Oh my gosh, well they're going to have a nice cool start to the morning hours tomorrow because we are looking at temperatures that could get down into the 49 degree readings. That chilly. That's going to be chilly through about 7 o'clock in the morning. We can take a look and then we're going to be seeing temperatures tonight dropping down to the 50s, but this is what it looks like tomorrow. 49 at 7, 70 by noontime. So it'll be a perfect, perfect time how do you, to be running. How do you think it'll feel at the top of that bridge? Maybe Ooh, or in the early breezy, morning hours. A little breezy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that cool? Gorgeous. Look at Beautiful. that. Beautiful.